few months ago, I tested the i9-7900X, which was Intel's top tier CPU with 10 cores, and it pretty much crushed every single game and benchmark I threw at it. It was definitely no joke, and you can find that video over there in the top right hand corner. But today, I wanted to up the ante even further with Threadripper and Vega and build the ultimate AMD PC. So it all starts with the CPU, which is of course the top of the line Threadripper chip, which is the 1950X. And this thing has 16 cores running 32 threads. Absolutely insane. I know it's gonna crush it in the performance department, but we'll save that for another time. In the meantime though, this thing supports quad channel RAM. It's got a 3.4 gigahertz base clock, four gigahertz boost. And yeah, I just can't wait to really put this thing through its paces. To call this, at the moment, options are not necessarily limited, but they're not necessarily optimized. The thing I've got here is the Master Liquid 240 from Cooler Master. This is definitely the value option as it's a large 240 millimeter radiator that's available for around about 65, 70 pounds at the time of filming. There are full cover um, blocks out there that are gonna do a better job of cooling Threadripper. So if you are going to want to overclock it as far as it will go, then obviously you're going to want to look at those. But I'm very interested to see how a sort of more value orientated cooling solution actually does work with Threadripper. The motherboard is from MSI, and this is the X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. Not the catchiest name out there, but I quite like its design, and I think a lot of people will for this sort of build, because while it's got some RGB, it's not really overstated in any way. It's more about the features, so you've got things like AC Wi-Fi, you've got three M.2 slots with their generation two of the heat shield. Everything's got steel armor on it, so the PCIe slots and the RAM, most of them anyway, have um, this steel armor that should actually uh, keep your cards from breaking the PCIe slots. And just in general, it seems to be a very strong, robust motherboard that seems excellent for this purpose. As far as RAM is concerned, we actually got a delivery yesterday, um, well, two days ago, the day before the build, and this is new from a data, it's XPG RGB RAM. So we love RGB RAM, it really does make your computer stand out. I know not everyone will obviously like RGB RAM, but the point is, this thing is 32 gigabytes, it runs at 3000 megahertz, though other speeds are available. And because it's quad channel RAM, we're gonna need four sticks, which this set is, and it seems to work absolutely fine so far with Threadripper. But if RGB RAM isn't exciting enough for you, then maybe you'll be interested in the GPU. It's not really that interesting. It's the Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Edition, the best graphics card you can currently get over on Team Red. So this thing has a 120 millimeter cooler attached to it, which means it stays pretty quiet and cool under load despite its high TDP. It's gonna be very suitable for work and gaming with things like FreeSync technology on the gaming side, and then good support for applications like DaVinci Resolve that should be able to actually uh, use this hardware acceleration and put it to good use. It's definitely not the cheapest card out there, but it's definitely gonna be a serious bit of kit for a serious PC. Now to power this entire system, we will need something with a fair amount of wattage. I think 750 watts is probably about right, which is why we've got my trusty Cooler Master V750. It doesn't run dead silent, but it's very, very quiet. And again, it is actually pretty good value for a power supply and it's fully modular as well. So we will be getting a nice, clean and tidy build. On the storage front, we've gone for two things. We've got an M.2 drive that I would be using if I was doing some uh, high-end 4K or above video editing, because it makes a lot of sense to have everything on a super fast drive for quick access speeds. But then we've also gone for a SATA drive as well. So the combination of the two, we've got a Samsung 960 Evo, and then a Crucial MX100. So the MX100 is my personal drive I've been using for years. There is a newer version, the MX300, currently available. That you should check out if you are interested in sort of replicating this build. So those are all of the parts that I've been using for this system. The case I went for was a Master Case 5T from Cooler Master. I did swap out the fans to their Master Fan Pro 120 RGB for a little bit more visual appeal. 
And then I also used an RGB controller so that I could actually control the fans manually with software. But I was really impressed with the build experience because nothing really went wrong as far as building it was concerned. There is a brand new socket type that involves sliding the CPU into its socket rather than placing it, which while it might look a little bit weird on camera, actually it's very simple once you know what you're doing. The case itself was very easy to build in. You did have to put the standoffs in yourself, which is a little bit unusual, but not a problem at all. Everything just went in snugly. There was plenty of room. There's loads of routing holes or routing holes. Yes, if you live in America, we say it differently here in England. But it's just really appreciated that Cooler Master seemed to be thinking about the builder from a building perspective rather than just sort of focusing on visual appearance. It really is appreciated when you come to put this thing together and you just find that everything is basically where you need it to. The only thing and the only slight gripe I had is actually with the um, RGB fans and that's just the fact that the cables maybe could have been a little bit longer because I had to trail them all the way down the back of the case and it sort of looks a little bit ugly and out of place but generally speaking no real complaints. The complaint that I do have is the fact that the computer didn't work when I put it all together and turned it on for the first time. I was getting an error code B2 which was like oh no what's, what, what's the problem? Is it RAM? Is it the CPU? Have I broken something? Turns out what it was is that the Vega GPU wasn't actually supported by the BIOS, which is a little bit strange. Um, so I basically just had to swap out the GPU, update the BIOS, and everything then worked. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how the system looks and performance. I won't give anything away, but yeah, 16 cores, 32 threads. I think you, uh, I think you, 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 you know what's coming. You definitely know what's coming. But yeah, no, it's fantastic. I, I really like the look of the case because. It's going for a sort of more traditional look that sort of keeps with the modern times. So you've got that tempered glass, you've got the RGB appeal, you can add uh, loads of stuff with the modularity. The handle on the top is really appreciated, although this thing is very heavy, so it's not quite as useful as it would be on a sort of lighter case. But if you're someone that isn't all about the sort of making your PC the centerpiece of the room and having it being able to be spotted from the road uh, a mile away, and this is definitely a, a solid case, although it is £200, so it's definitely uh, slightly on the expensive side. But then again, it's so easy to build in, and it looks great, and it supports a wide range of hardware. So it gets my seal of approval, but if you're after something that's a little bit more uh, value-orientated, there are plenty of other options available that don't require you to spend getting on for £200. So that has been the AMD system. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, hit the like button and there will be a performance section that will go over everything you need to know. So overclocking, thermals, uh, benchmarks in real world tests, um, both gaming and of course work. Um, if you want to see that, then do get subscribed if you're not already. And a massive thank you to everyone for actually supplying parts for this build as well. So that's AMD. MSI, Samsung, Cooler Master, it's all really appreciated and it obviously makes videos like this happen. Like I say, if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and stay tuned for part two. Massive thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. It's, happen it's happened again, Loki. It's happened again. This bloody cat will not leave me alone.